I want to introduce this year's 2022 Playing Scene winner, Annie Smith. Thank you, Eric, for that wonderful introduction. I am cr incredibly honored to receive this award. I want to thank my Polaris crew for being here to support me. <laughs> and my family is here too, my husband and my mom and my daughter Scarlett. Hi, Scarlett. <laughs> like most of you, I come to work every day prepared to do my best for the students that I love. And as a reward for those efforts, I see those aha moments and the smiles on my students' faces when they conquer something that felt impossible at the start. I've been an educator for 15 years, first in the Middle East, then in Florida, and now here in, here in Chicago at Polaris. How many of you are on an endless pursuit to create the most perfect learning environment for your students? Anybody? Nobody? <laughs> Well, let me tell you, my classroom is not Pinterest perfect. <laughs> when I talk about the endless pursuit of the most perfect learning environment, I'm not talking about themed borders or coordinated decor or students sitting silently on the carpet with their hands folded. If you were to walk into my classroom, at first glance, it may not appear perfect at all. But if you look and listen closely, you'll hear many student voices, laughter, lots of questions and loud ideas. Students would probably run, yes, I said run, up to you and introduce themselves. They would welcome you to our crew and then probably interview you to learn more about you and why you're there. <laughs> it's not by accident that my classroom is a little messy. It's not because I ran out of time that my students aren't assigned seats on the carpet. And it's not a lack of classroom management that causes my students to shout out in excitement. It's because I know real learning is messy. Yeah. I've come to realize that creating the perfect learning environment means creating a space where students feel safe and empowered and supported. We all know that teaching kindergarten and first grade students to write at the beginning of the year often starts with kids crying and screaming, I can't, I don't know how. Any kindergarten teachers here? You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> It can feel a bit chaotic. And if anyone walks into my classroom at the beginning of the year, I say, yes, they are crying. Yes, they are OK. And please don't give them the answers. <laughs> I know as soon as somebody tells them how to do something, their brains are going to immediately shut down. The students learn to think, if I cry, somebody's going to do it for me. What if we teach them strategies and mindset and effort? Students will actually start to believe that they can do it. And this is where the real learning happens. Students may write something like XPQRT and then run up to me with the biggest smile on their face and say, Miss Smith, I wrote, I love my mom. <laughs> These are the best parts of my day. This is when students start to believe in themselves and they believe that they're capable of doing more than they thought possible. These small, and sometimes huge, messy moments change how students see themselves as learners, thinkers, and people. From here, they start to believe they can do anything, and they can. This is why I teach. All right, the quiet you hear in this room right now is so rare in my classroom, and I'm sure it's rare in your classrooms and schools too. So let's get a bit of joyful energy going. When I say go, I want you to reach under your chairs for the bottle of glitter. Go. No, 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 I'm just joking. I'm just joking. <laughs> We'd get kicked out of this hotel if we gave a thousand people glitter. When I say go, find somebody near you wearing the same color as you and just give them a quick high five. Go. I want you to find somebody near you who's going to eat the exact
exact same thing for lunch as you and give them a high five. Go. <laughs> I think kindergartners are better listeners, guys. <laughs> How many of you didn't even attempt to high-five someone because it's impossible to know what someone's gonna order for lunch? And it's uncomfortable to do something where we feel like we can't be successful. This is how our students feel when they're learning and trying something brand new. So it's so important for us as educators to create an environment where students feel comfortable attempting hard tasks and feel okay being wrong. This is where crew comes in. I used the structure of crew before I had even heard of EL because it's time spent building relationships between myself and my students and between my students. Students quickly realize that I am not the all-knowing person in the classroom. Crew builds the capacity of students to see themselves as independent thinkers and problem solvers. Because of crew, my stu students feel known and loved and that their voice is not just expected in my classroom, but it's needed. I'm lucky enough to have my current crew for the second year. We have so much fun together, and sometimes I think I need them more than they need me. To be honest, this is year 15 of my teaching career, and I think it might be one of the most difficult. Brendan, one of the boys who I also had last year, he can see the frustration overcome me. My face turned red, my body tense up, and he calmly walks up to me and he says, "Miss Smith, I think you might need to take some deep breaths. <laughs> He's six. I love that he is so confident that even though I'm his teacher, he knows that he can still help me. This is being crew. I love Brendan and all the students in my class, as I'm sure you do too. So let's bring our beloved kids into this space. When I say go, tell a person near you a few words about a student who holds a special place in your heart. Go ahead. but I've only got eight minutes, so we gotta keep moving. <laughs> For most of my teaching career, I focused on serving children in marginalized communities where most of my students come from poverty and pre present trauma-induced learning difficulties. I continue to intentionally examine how my beliefs about students and their abilities impact their academics and their behaviors. Let's be real, being a teacher is hard work. Planning, presenting, assessing, discussing all of it. What if we focus less on having Pinterest perfect classrooms, but instead we create a beautiful environment by listening to our students and planning to better meet their needs? What if we give ourselves a break from doing so much and give more of the voice and the power to the students in our room? What if we love them enough to let them struggle? Great things are possible. Thank you.